step into the future when scientists discover nature's secrets on supercomputers, when simulations can be shared like faxes and the visual information surrounds you. At this summer's SIGGRAPH conference, we saw what it will be like when scientists and engineers routinely have vast computer power, fiber optics communications, and exquisite visualization on their desktops. There were interactive simulations of everything from the molecular to the astrophysical, from weather studies to car crashes. We walked through abstract mathematical spaces describing chaos. We collaboratively fired simulated neurons over the networks from Chicago to San Francisco to Pasadena. Forty different projects used a score of the nation's premier supercomputers and scientific devices all tied together. Scientists moved atoms around, simulated the workings of complex brain cells, and controlled powerful photon beam lines at Brookhaven National Laboratory to discover the structure of organic molecules online in front of large crowds. A virtual reality theater called The Cave put us into the human brain, inside the body of a seven-week-old embryo, and made us one with the galaxies. We walked through the Kuwaiti oil fires and the weather systems of North America. We explored chaos and strange attractors. SIGGRAPH 92 was at McCormick Place from July 26th through 31st. This part of it was called Showcase, and it ran three full days. Showcase was organized by SIGGRAPH 92, the Electronic Visualization Laboratory at the University of Illinois at Chicago, and the National Center for Supercomputing Applications. Funding was provided by NSF, DARPA, NIMH, DOE, ACM SIGGRAPH, NASA, and a host of participating corporations. WMAQ-TV Chicago. Now, live from the NBC Tower, this is the Channel 5 News at 4.30. Up next, a remarkable peek into the world of virtual reality, a world they call the cave. Illinois is about to make its mark in the world of virtual reality. You may have seen the goggles that allow you to experience a 3D world of image created by computers. But now there's something new. It is called The Cave. Allison Rosati got a chance to see it before its world debut and takes us on a tour, Allison. All right, Joan and Warner, The Cave will be revealed right here in Chicago tomorrow. And with it, everyone at home comes one step closer to stepping inside their computer terminal, or better yet, their television set. Many of us have watched, but few have visited the world created by computers, the world of electronic images. How to transport people into this place became the mission of professors Tom DeFonte and Dan Sandine of the University of Illinois at Chicago. With the help of students, five computers, four video projectors, and four special screens, all supplied by data display, they created the cave, a virtual reality helmet big enough to walk in. One of the big differences about the cave is it allows the perspective of inside out instead of the perspective of outside in, which is what most computer displays are limited to. So it's particularly good for very large and complex objects that you want to understand in three dimensions. It doesn't feel like looking at a computer screen or it doesn't feel like the head-mounted displays. It's just really a very nice feeling of immersion. While the cave does not confine you to a helmet to experience virtual reality, it does require special glasses hooked up to a tracking device. It tells the computers where you are so it can give you the, the proper perspective from wherever you are and it, it tracks, it moves as fast as you do. So depending on which way I walk in the room, that's right. the perspective I then get of right. whatever I'm looking oh, that's So you can see around the things. And the 3D world created inside the cave appears so real, you can't help but react. Okay, you can go look up and down if you want. You can move in a little bit. Oh, it nods. Get closer Hello. to it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually figuring out exactly what you're doing and corresponding to it. And can you imagine playing a video game in here? But the cave is not just all fun and games. It has many practical applications. For example, you could go to a business conference halfway across the country without actually going there. The cave is also an architect's dream, allowing them to give tours of their buildings before they go up. And in the world of medicine, it will give doctors a better look at the human body. The, the cave affords people the opportunity to go explore things that are too small, too big, too dangerous, or too far away to see otherwise. 
Experts say you could see the cave in your own home before the 90s are through, allowing you to step into the world beyond the computer screen for a visit. And if you just can't wait for the cave to become a household item, for just $25 you can experience it at the SIGGRAPH conference going on at McCormick Place. Now the cave opens tomorrow for its world debut and organizers expect long lines. They also expect the rest of the world to go home trying to figure out just how the U of I did it. This is Channel 2 News at 4.30. Then it's got whiz, it's got bang, but is it real or just a computer's imagination? Virtual reality comes to Chicago, really, and we'll tell you about it. And welcome to a computer fantasy world that feels very, very real. I'm right here in the environment. The objects seem as though they fl actually float in the room, but they're not really there. It's, it's really three-dimensional. It's really exciting. Do -do 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 -do. It's called virtual reality. The story coming up after this. It is called virtual reality, but it's a reality that so, is so new that few of us have ever experienced it. And as Mike Chalinas reports, the fantasy world created by the most sophisticated computer software and hardware could soon be on the cutting edge of entertainment. Enter the world of virtual reality, a world that isn't real, but sure as heck feels like it. Well, virtual reality is part of this long goal to create a world that's so convincing that it feels just like the world that you're in every day. Virtual reality is created from the viewer's point of view, moving the participant into a realistic 3D computer-generated world, a world that moves as the viewer reacts. I'm navigating through this uh, database of Chicago. Um, I, what I can do is with my wand, I can control the flight of a simulated airplane through Chicago. It's just like being there. <laughs> you on your way? Yeah, it's pretty amazing. To create immersive virtual reality, you need four video screens that are run by four graphics computers. One computer per each screen. Top that off with a super sound system, and you have virtual reality. But it also requires a lot of work. For example, this University of Illinois Chicago virtual reality exhibit took a year and a half to create. The result, though, is fantastic, providing the ultimate video experience. It's almost an out-of-body kind of experience. This is just amazing. And in the future, it's likely to get even more amazing, combining the visual qualities of an Omnimax theater with the speed of video games to create the ultimate non-real world. Mike Chilinas, Channel 2 News.